With pick number 90, which is a third round selection in the 2022 draft, the Las Vegas Raiders selected a player who I'm fascinated in, in Dylan Parham. I think he could end up being a pretty good guard. He played guard in college, and I think that's probably where he'll be. Maybe we'll see another chance with Alex Leatherwood at tackle, which, you know, Alex Leatherwood, uh, okay, he shouldn't have been drafted when he was drafted, but he's not a horrible prospect either. We'll see if he can, you know, take a bet, you know, better step this following year, maybe put him out to tackle and see how that works. But they need offensive line help, and I think Parham could be that guy. So first, I want to talk about some. I'm going to talk about some PFF grades. I know not everyone loves PFF grades, but I'm going to spend a minute talking about that, and then we'll get to the film, which is what most people, you know, like to care about. I think people love a blend of this stuff. That's what I like, so that's why I'm talking about both. So here are his, you know, four years as a starter, over 3,500 snaps we have with Dylan Parham. And it's interesting because you look at his numbers uh, in terms of like the PFF grades and they, you know, are weird, right? Because you typically expect it to nicely go up each year. That's what you hope to see with young players. That's not what happened with Parham. He was, you know, kind of the same in 2019 and 2018. Then in 2020, he had this big jump forward, but then kind of fell back down to earth a little bit in 2021. His pass blocking grade, you know, didn't fall back too much, just about three points, but his run blocking grade fell back over 10 points. So that's kind of the question is what happened if his run blocking and really, you know, his pass blocking still did drop off. So where is he now? I think for one thing, What's interesting is that, hey, if he had a good 2020 season, that's still reason to be optimistic. But what is he now at 20, in 2021? Because that's kind of what most people view him as and kind of why he got drafted in the third round, I think, because these numbers are not quite as good. And also, one thing I should just mention very quick is it is a real thing. That, like These grades do tend to translate pretty well to the NFL. Guys who do well at this type of stuff, that is something that translates pretty well. It, and, you know, comparative to other positions like quarterback, where it pretty much means nothing. Uh, for something like this, it actually is like you look at the, you know, a lot of the first rounders that had good PFF grades ended up being good pros, whereas a lot of the bust that were selected in the first round, uh, you know, a lot of them didn't have great PFF grades. So that's just, you know, that's why I look at that stuff. So first, let's start off with a play like this. This is going to be him going up one-on-one -on -one against good competition, Logan Hall, who was selected with pick 33 in this past draft class. One pick higher, and he would have been a first-round talent. Uh, what is the situation here? Well, he's going up one-on-one -on -one against Dylan Parham. And right when this play begins, you see how, you know, uh, initial contact is made. Uh, and really what I think what's impressive about this is, I mean, listen, Logan Hall is someone who kind of overpowered guys constantly uh, throughout college. So look at how Parham is going to hold his own here. Watch him drive Hall back. It does seem like he does do a good job with power. That's something that he really thrives in and I think can do a very good job at. Like stuff like this is another one where we saw him do a good amount of double teams at Memphis. And I thought he did a pretty good job with some of these where it's going to, again, be a double team on an interior defensive lineman and watch what happens. Look, right when this play begins, you see how he's able to create the contact right there. And his job is to kind of clear up a gap and look at what he's going to be able to do as you know, eventually the center is going to get off this block and go up to block someone at the second level. As you see, he does do a pretty good job of this. I, I think that, you know, his power shows, in my opinion, you do see the power with Dylan Parham. That is definitely a positive attribute in his game. So what are the flaws and what are maybe a flaw that came up last year that didn't happen two years ago? Well, from what I've seen, it's kind of one clear thing. It's something like this, where again, it's going to be a double team, but this time, unlike the last time, he's the guy who's supposed to get off the block and then get up to block someone at the second level. And when he was asked to do this, which I feel like he was asked a lot more to do this last year than two years ago, he did start to struggle. So it's an oversimplification to say this is the whole reason why he took a step back last year. But I think this was a part of it, where it's going to be a double team on an interior defensive lineman. Uh, and so watch what Parham does. Look, right when this play begins, he legitimately moves him way out of the way. Like this is an awesome double team to get someone out of position. But the issue is that's not what Parham's job was entirely. He's not just supposed to finish off this double team. You also have to get up to the next level to block someone else. And he kind of spent a bit too long doing this. Now, it was a fast play. Running back got to the gap quickly, so maybe it wouldn't have mattered regardless. But as you see, I mean, that tackle was made by 24. Parham was not able to get over there. Maybe if Parham, uh, you know, was, that block could have been made and you could have gained more yards right there. So that's something I noticed and is something that, you know, is a thing. One last play. I just want to bring up, like, his pass protection is good. I think his pass protection is something that's, like, definitely very quality where he's, you know, you see where he is on this play. He is the right guard. And it's going to be, I want to show this play because it's not just 
kind of like one of those, okay, you got to just have the strength, like a lot of times it is in college. This is going to be, he's going to have to have some footwork because watch who he's going to end up going against. As you see, Houston is blitzing here, meaning you're going up against the guy who's much smaller than you, meaning it's going to be difficult to make sure that, you know, you don't let him get by you. Obviously, typically you think, okay, well, this is a big mismatch, but it's difficult sometimes because the littler guy can, you know, use his footwork to get around, right? However, when he tries to do that, Parham just does not let that happen, uses his hands to allow himself to, you know, uh, do a solid job. I think he'll be a solid guard at the NFL level and definitely good value for pick 90. That's just kind of what I feel like when I watch his tape. He's definitely someone who many are going to consider undersized at 6'2 and 3'11". Uh, so, you know, again, it's crazy to think that someone that's 311 pounds could be considered undersized. But, you know, I can imagine some people will feel that way, especially being a little bit shorter. And part of it is that's kind of, I think, a little bit of why, you know, that flaw I talked about with him can be a flaw is the fact that he kind of has to a little bit just like go a little bit too hard, right? He just really has to put a lot of effort into finishing off a block like that. So he, you know, gets a little bit more out of position when he does something like that. He is definitely someone who, you know, has to put his all into some of these blocks, which can make something like that a little difficult just because he is a little bit smaller. Good athlete, definitely athletic. That's something that you notice as well. And again, being 6'2", it is going to help you to have a little bit better footwork. That's how he was able to, you know, block a defensive back, right? So there's definite pros and cons to Parham's game, and that's why I'm fascinated about him as a player. I think that the Raiders could definitely use some offensive linemen who can play, and I do think he's someone who could at least come in and be a solid contributor, and it'll be interesting to see exactly how he's used. Maybe he even transitions to center. I don't know. Uh, I could see something like that happening. Uh, definitely feels like he's an inside guy to me, and again, for pick 90, it just feels like good value to me. He feels like someone who is better than when he got picked. On the consensus big board of where, you know, all those mock drafts are compiled together, he was 68th. So 68th on the consensus big board and gets picked several picks later. Uh, again, I get it. I'm not sitting here and saying that, like, this guy is going to be a superstar by any means, but definitely someone I'm interested in, and I could see him having a decent career. So that's kind of how I, I view this stuff. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how this goes. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on Dylan Parham and what he can bring to the Las Vegas Raiders? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.